Hi, first grade. It's Miss Lucy from Gallup Hill School. Um, we have finished unit one of our writing, and um, you all did a fabulous job. So we are on our way of becoming a community of writers. Today, we start unit two for our writer's workshop. So we are going to look at writing a personal narrative. What is a personal narrative? All right, so a personal narrative is a story that's all about yourself. So we know lots about ourselves, right? So this should be easy peasy. All right, so a personal narrative is a story about something that has happened to you and how you feel about it, um, what you did, and it could be an event in your life. It could be a vacation. It could be a birthday party. It could be anything you want it to be. Something that has happened to you. So when we write a personal narrative, the main character of the story is going to be, you guessed it, you. And we also write it in the first person. What does that mean? That means we use the word I. So when, you're, when you talk about your character, which is you, you're going to be using the word I. So for example, if I were writing a story about my life, I wouldn't say Miss Lucy jumped in her car. I would say I jumped in my car. All right, so you're going to describe a small moment in your life. So, um, you know, any moment. And we want to be able to write this as a book. So not so small that you only get a short paragraph, but we want it a little bigger so that you get a whole book. All right, and you're going to include your own feelings and thoughts about it. All right, so let's read. We are going to read a book called I'm My Own Dog by David Ezra Stein. And we are going to look at how this is a personal narrative. I'm my own dog. Nobody owns me. I own myself. Now I'm going to stop right here. I know it's super quick, but so... Who's our main character right now? Yes, the dog, right? Even the story is called I'm My Own Dog. So can you see just on the first page how the main character is talking in the first person? He's saying, I'm my own dog. Nobody owns me. I own myself. So see how he's using that I. I work like a dog all day. When I get home, I fetch my own slippers. I curl up at my own feet. Sometimes if I'm not comfortable, I tell myself to roll over. And I do. So if we stop and think for a second, what is our character, the dog, telling a story about? What do you think? Well, if you said he's telling a story about himself, you are absolutely correct. If someone told me sit, I wouldn't do it. Even if they said, I'll give you a bone. Sometimes I throw a stick. Then I go get it. It's fun. Every morning when I look in the mirror, I lick my own face because I am so happy to see me. I say, good dog. I am a good dog. Then I give myself a good scratch. But there's this one spot I can't reach right in the middle of my back. So, all right. So there's a word in here that we've already seen a few times in the story. 
my. Did you know that's another form of using the first person, right? When we talk about ourselves, we would say my, me, myself. One time it got so bad, I let someone scratch it. The little guy followed me home. I felt sorry for him. So I got a leash. How else am I supposed to lead him around? Come on, I say. Come on, boy. I'll take you to the park. I like showing him things. Look, look, look. That is a squirrel, I say. I taught him the stick game. I have him throw. I don't know if he understands all my commands yet, but he's learning. Sit, sit. Good boy. Some folks say they're not worth the trouble. You can't keep them from yapping. And you always have to clean up after them. But I've grown attached to the little fella. Between you and me, I'm his best friend. The end. Nobody owns me. I own myself. All right, boys and girls, did you like that story? Isn't it really cute? I love how it's told from the dog's perspective. All right, so what's our job next? So everybody should have this page. If you are in school, your teacher has it. And if you are a distance learner today, then it should have been sent home to you. And if you don't have it, you can use any old piece of paper. So boys and girls, this is what we call a web, right? Kind of looks like the spider in the middle, and then it's got all different lines going out. So today we're going to talk about good writing habits. We're not going to dive right into our personal narrative yet, because we have to work up to that. So the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out some good writing habits. So I'm going to help you with one, and then... I want you to try and fill in the web yourself. I might help you with two. We'll have to see. Okay, so the first one I'm thinking about is, so I want you to be thinking too. So if you are getting ready to sit down and write, do you think you should be laying in bed? Should you be in front of the TV? Probably not, right? So we want to get in a good writing spot, right? That's a good writing habit to, to have. Now, the other one I'm going to help you with is... Um, thinking about when you're writing, what do you want to make sure that you do, right? So you have your paper, you have your pencil, you're gathering your thoughts. So when we're writing books, we want to write in our best handwriting. All right, boys and girls, as you see, I've gone out of the bubble. That's quite all right. It does not have to be perfect. So I am going to stop here and let you fill in the rest of the bubbles. Now, I want you to really be thinking about what is a good writing habit for you to have, right? So Right, we've said so far to get in a good writing spot and write in our best handwriting. So you also want to think of some other things about things that you want to do while you're writing and something that you would want to do every time you write. All right, boys and girls, when you are done with this, you're going to put it back in your folder or however you get your work back to your teacher and you will bring it back to school. If you're in school, your teacher will take care of it. All right, boys and girls, I hope you have a great day. Happy writing.